Welcome to another edition of 4 and 4. I'm Kathy Hallgren, Director of South St. Paul Public Library, and this month I have four more great books to tell you about. I'd say the thread that runs through them is the fact that nothing is as it appears. My first book is Thomas Christopher Green's The Headmaster's Wife. This book is hard to describe without giving everything away, but it's laid out in three parts, and the first part concerns the current headmaster of Lancaster Academy, Arthur Winthrop. In his mid-fifties, he's supposedly living his dream of following in his father's footsteps and ruling the roost, but things aren't going too well. He and his wife barely communicate, he's drinking more and more, and he's obsessed with a student in his Russian lit class. This alternates with chapters where he's being questioned in New York. It seems he decided to walk through Central Park in the nude and disturbed quite a few people. There are clues dropped along the way, but I think most people will be very surprised at the end of the first portion of the book. I couldn't wait to read the rest of it. Definitely one of the better books of 2014 that forces you to face the music no matter how painful it may be. Oh, those choices. They'll get us every time. My next book, 40 Acres, by Dwayne Alexander Smith, starts out with a man being kidnapped from Green Hill Mall in Southdale, Minnesota. Those of us who live in Minnesota know that's a thin disguise for Southdale Mall in Edina, Minnesota. Nevertheless, the majority of the book takes place on the East Coast where attorney Martin Gray has just won a legal battle against the infamous attorney Damon Darrell. Soon, Damon befriends Martin, inviting him and his wife to a party at his estate. Upon arrival, Martin discovers that some of the wealthiest African-American men are the other guests, and he soon realizes they're part of a club of sorts, and he just might want in. Martin's wife Anna isn't interested in associating with this crowd since she knows nothing's for free, and she doesn't want to find out the cost of this exclusive club. Martin, on the other hand, is sorely tempted, and he agrees to go on a whitewater rafting weekend with the elite members. He first starts to get a little nervous when he realizes the private plane doesn't seem to be going towards the wild rivers of the West, and then he's drugged to keep him passive and ignorant. When he finally arrives at 40 acres, an unusual plantation of sorts, and meets the revered Dr. Kasim, his values are tested to the limit in a world of revenge, despair, and deceit as he's surrounded by the Brotherhood. If he becomes one of them, Will he give up his humanity? If he chooses his own path, will he get out alive? This novel tackles tough questions such as, what is the use of power? Or, can reparations to others ever be made for the cruelty of your ancestors? Or, is revenge a right? My next book also features a Minnesota locale. It's The Good Girl by Mary Kabicha, and like 40 Acres, it's an unusual entry in the thriller category. Mia Dennett, a 20-something school teacher, doesn't show up at work one morning, and her wealthy family is alerted. Her mother, Eve, appears to be the only one remotely concerned, and we're presented a picture of quite the dysfunctional family, with an ambitious judge as her father and an equally cold, calculating sister as a lawyer. Mia chose a different path in life and is more of a free spirit, so there's a question as to whether she just ran off for a few days. But we know that she actually has been kidnapped by a man named Colin, who was supposed to deliver her to a criminal element. But instead, he decided he wanted out of the business and took off with her up to northern Minnesota, where his father has a remote summer cabin near Grand Marais. As Mia's mother, Eve, discovers how lonesome her marriage has been over the years, Mia is coming to much the same conclusion regarding her life and her boyfriend. Her fear of Colin recedes as the winter approaches and he attempts to figure out his next move in getting them both to safety. And Detective Hoffman is trying to figure it all out once Mia is returned to her family and now goes by the name Chloe. The tension in the book is created in a unique way with each chapter's title, a character's name, followed by the word before or after. It'll keep you guessing until the end. Finally, if you liked Colleen McCullough's The Thornbirds, I'm sure you will want to pick up her latest book, Bittersweet, also set in Australia. Every now and then I enjoy a book written in an older style where everything's linear, you're not bouncing back and forth between time periods, and you can just settle in and enjoy the voyage into another time and place. This is one of those books. 
The time is 1926 and the rector's four twin daughters have enrolled in nursing school to get out from under Maud's wing, the mother of the youngest set of twins, Kitty and Tufts, and the stepmother to the older twins, Etta and Grace. It seems the rector took the easy way out and married his housekeeper once his wife had died, and things have been a bit difficult for all the girls, but little do they know what awaits them in the outside world with the Great Depression approaching. Laced with light humor, this novel was a welcome change for me. That's all for this edition of 4 and 4. See you in November with four more titles in four minutes.